Anatha. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, and amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, 424. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. God bless you. Let's just read the word of God together, and then you can see it. And then I bring the word. Let's honor God's word as we just read the word of God together. Today I'm going to be preaching, starting a series called the Evolve series. Evolve. To evolve means to transform, to change. I've had many people say to me, I want my life to change. But I want to say to you that your life will not change until you change your life. You must change certain things you do if you would also have a better or a new result. Just one reading, Psalm 71 and verse 21. Psalm 71 and verse 21. I'm just going to read that. Let me first read that um, in the New King James Version. And then I read it in another translation. We're looking today. I'm starting a series, like I said, on Evolve. Evolve. How to change. Change your life. We live in a changing time, in a changing season. And I believe that if you will change, if your story will change, you also need to change your life story by yourself. Psalm 71 and verse 21. The New King James Version says, You shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Let me read it to us in the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation. And the Bible says, Give us even more greatness than before. Turn and comfort us once again. I love that translation. It says, Give us even more greatness than before. So that after COVID, post-COVID, you have greatness before. But you are asking God to give you more greatness, a better greatness. And it's what God will do in your life. Let's just pray. I'm speaking on wired for greatness. Wired for greatness. Thank you, Father, for your word. Because the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto simple. And our simple folks, we've come tonight to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And I write the word of life even upon the spirit of man. After now, oh God, make us better people. Let's walk according to your mandate. Let's walk according to your purpose. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you guys. Have your seat. Uh, let's just take this journey together. All right. Wired for greatness. One of the things that amazes me in life is how some people are so successful. How some people seem to have grasped what it takes to be successful. Why some people do not just have it. Some people are very prosperous. Some people are achieving things. I have noticed the difference between successful people and people who are not succeeding. It's not the amount of hours they pray. It's not how well they study the scripture. It is not how good things are for them. It is not their background. It is not that God loves them more than others. It is, according to Romans chapter 2, verse 11, Acts 10, 34. Scripture says God is not partial. There's no partiality with God. So why is it that some people seem to make it more than others? Why does it look that some people get from life more than some people have from life? I want you, as you're watching me, listening to me, I want you to pick a name. Uh, pick a name of somebody who you know is successful. Somebody you know that have achieved success. Just bring that name up in your mind. You can do that. Just bring it up in your mind. Somebody you know has been successful. Somebody you know who you will call a success. Just look at that person. Bring it up in your mind. I want you to just think, what does this guy have that I don't have? What makes him different from others? Basically, they have the same head. They have two legs. They have the same anatomy as we have. So what's the difference? What's the difference maker in their life? The answer is very simple. Some people seem to be wired for greatness more than others. The first step is that they understand. And that's the first step in attaining greatness. Is believing that you are special. Believing that you are special. That's the first thing if you are going to attain greatness. You are not just a random creation. God intrinsically wired you to meet needs, to solve problems, and to be the best of you. God intrinsically wired you to solve problems, to meet needs, and then to be the best of you. It is this belief that some people call this belief. The moment they get into this belief that I'm special, some people call it a special awakening. It is this conscious awakening to greatness that I call belief. The first belief that I'm special. It is this knowledge that points you towards growth and development. Someone here is saying, you know what? <laughs> You're just saying these things. I don't believe that I'm special. I don't believe I'm special. 
I am north. I came from my father. I know my dad. Uh, you, you're probably saying like, like um, Gideon said in scriptures. He said, I, I came from the least household, even in Israel. My father is not known, even in a house, in the clan. You know, you may be saying, I'm not special. I'm just a random guy. Allow me to say to you that you are special. God wired you separately, wired you specially. I want to first of all talk about your generic wiring. It, that when I say generic, I mean something that is, every one of us have it. Something generic with every man you see. There are three generic wiring we all have. And they are special. The first one is your composition. We are all clay, yes. Science has proven that. The scripture says that. All men, despite their looks, their gender, their race, we all are made in God's image. That makes us special. We are in God's class. You are special because you are made in the likeness of God. You are special because you are made just to be like God. Actually, when God made man, the Hebrew word used there was that God told, God told in Genesis 1, when Caesar, he said, let us make man in our own likeness. The Hebrew says, let us make an exact duplicate of us. So you are the exact duplicate of God. That makes you special because you are in God's class. If you are born again, it's even more special. It means that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You have God on your inside. You are a carrier of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. The scripture says that if any man have not the Holy Ghost, he is not of Christ. The Spirit of God dwells on our inside. We have the Spirit. The Bible says the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. 6, 19. The Bible told us that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And then number 2. I'm talking about your generic wiring. So three things that makes us special. The first one is our composition. We are the exact duplicate of God. We are in God's class. And then number two is your purpose. You may look like someone, but you are made different. There are no two of you on the earth. Your fingerprint is unique. That's why you sign it on your phone with your fingerprints. No one has your fingerprint on the surface of the heart. Oh, we are about six billion. But God has made it that your fingerprint is unique to you. Men are different. Even twins are not the same. I know because I have one, so I should know. When God had a need, he made you. You are intrinsically wired by God to be different in order to be the difference. You are unique in your giftings, in your potentials. Oh, you are different. Bible told us in Isaiah 49 verse 1, in the matches of the mother's womb, it said, oh, let the islands know, in the matches of my mother's womb, God called me by name. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, he already called Jeremiah. He called him by name. He called him a prophet, even to the nations. God has a call for you. 1424, a book of Isaiah says, surely as I have proposed. So God has a purpose for every heart. 27, three verses later, Isaiah 1427, scripture told us, he said, as he has proposed, so will he come to pass? Say, he has stretched for his hand. No one can turn him back. God had a purpose in mind, and then he fashioned you. He wired you intrinsically to fit in to that purpose he has made. And then number three, our generic wiring is our authority. Oh, apart from these first two, our authority. We have authority on the earth. When God made man, Genesis 1, 26, Genesis 1, 26, say, let them have dominion. Dominion. We have authority. We reign on earth. You are not supposed to live a subjugated life. You are supposed to reign in life. Why? Because that's the mandate of God from the very beginning. God made you to reign. God made you to reign. You are made to reign in life. I want you to tell yourself, I'm made to reign in life. You are not subjugated. You are not supposed to live lower than anyone. Matthew 10, 1. Jesus gave them authority. Say, go. Cast out demons. Go cast out demons. You are afraid of demons. It's already settled. Praise God. Oh, I, I, love, I, love, I love the TPT. The, 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 the Passion Translation of, of 71, 21 of the book of Psalms. It says, give us even more greatness than before. Someone here is saying, you know what? I know I'm special. I know I'm greater. But I've come to tell you there is more in God. There is more greatness. The Passion says, Give us even more greatness. You can turn that around and say, give, it, give us even more success. Give us even more prosperity. Give us even more favor. Give us even more beauty. There is more in God. Genesis 26 and verse 13. The Bible says, and the man was great, talking about Isaac, and went forward and grew until he became very great. We all are special. But there are special warnings, things that are unique to us. I've spoken about the generic things. 
I'm talking about you being wired for greatness. The moment you are giving back to these three things were in your life. You had a purpose. You had a composition. You had a you had a, you had God composition. You have authority. And then you have purpose. But I want to talk about the special things you and I have. Things that are unique to us. Things that you find in my life that you will not find in the life of Minister Halley. You won't find in the life of Minister Benga. You will see the faces of our people singing, our group, our unit singing. But as their faces differ, so also are the wirings and the giftings of their life also very different. Things that are unique to them. These are things God has put inside of us that has brought us this far. You are God's best person. There are things that are uniquely given to, by, to you by God so that you can attain greatness. No one is born empty. You are wired for greatness. You are wired for greatness. Let's look at certain unique wirings of God. Certain unique wirings of God. You see, when God is not a bully, I tell folks, uh, God is not a bully. The moment God made you and gave you a purpose, he equipped you in a way that you can fulfill even that purpose. It would be wrong for God to ask you to do a thing while he has not equipped you to do that thing. That would be a bully. And my God is not a bully. My God is a loving, doting father. If he has called you for a thing, he would have commissioned you for that thing and he would have graced you for his. And when we talk about God's grace upon a life, we are talking about the tangibility of the anointed. The grace is the gift, the skills, the talent. And these are the wireness you and I have that makes us special. I want to quickly itemize them so that you can get it. Number one, he created you distinctly because of your purpose. Your purpose in life will determine your giftings and your abilities. You may not know that you can do it. But the fact that God has called you to do it means he has provided all you need to do it. You need to get that. He has called you for it. You are saying, you know, I, I, I can't do it. But if he has called you for it, to it and for it, it means that he has equipped you to it. Moses looked at God and said, I can't do this. I stammer. I can't lead. About a million people, I can't do that. But because God has equipped him, he has called him, he equipped him. Your purpose is what makes you distinct. Your purpose is what differentiates you from other people. You are masterly made by God into the speck it will take to fulfill your purpose. You are masterly made by God into the speck it will take to fulfill your purpose. Don't look at another guy with that specification. Don't look at that guy and say, oh, you know, she can sing, I can't. There was a time I used to want to be a singer. I remember for many years I was, I was singing. I was in the studio, I, was, I thought I was singing. Unknown to me, they are off the mic. And I was singing. I was very glad I was in the studio. And when they came out, they said, I said, okay, can I go for the second song? They said, no, no. I mean, I was the kind of people they take to the studio so that the choir will still be in peace. It was not a voice. I was not equipped for it. But I was there. And I, I, I got to a point, I stopped wanting to be that. Because I understood. That I, will, I have been masterly made by God into the spec it will take to fulfill purpose. The exact specification. Purpose determines your wiring, your giftings, your talent, your ability. It determines what makes you. Esther was created smashingly beautiful because it will take beauty to enter into the citadel of the king. You see that? It, it will take beauty. When the Bible told us, the Bible said, as Sushan, they were told, go get the beautiful girls. Somebody said, you know, Esther became the queen because she found favor. <laughs> there was no favor mentioned. She had to, first of all, pass the mark of being beautiful before she got into the palace. After she got into the palace, beauty and favor now came. But first of all, you must be wired for purpose. Somebody said, I've been praying for grace. No, if you are not equipped for it, grace will not come. Grace will come upon that which God has called you for. You may be running another man's race because you think preachers are the ones that are exciting. Praise God, when we all get to heaven, you will discover sweepers. Have more crowns than some preachers. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, I love it. God told me, yesterday, purpose determines your makeup. Purpose determines your makeup. Listen to these trees don't fly. Tattoos don't walk. Fish don't crawl. Trees don't sing. Design determines capabilities. Understand quite well that purpose is the reason why you are created. Psalm 3 verse 11, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plan of his heart from generation unto generation. Understand your purpose. 
it will be a pointer to that which you have on your inside. Number two, your, the unique opportunities he offers you. The first thing, which are unique to you, the first one is your purpose. The second one is the opportunities he offers you. God will bring varied and diverse opportunities our way that will give room for us to use our potentials. Opportunity is defined as a chance to advance in life, a chance to progress, your opportunity to lead a company, your opportunity to study a course. Some people don't have the opportunity. You probably sat for jam with, a, with someone and the person is giving um, biochemistry or sometimes chemistry education and you are giving medicine. Oh, you know what? That's an opportunity. God will give opportunities to some people and they won't give some. Your opportunity to lead a company, to volunteer in an organization. Listen to this. Men are products of maximized opportunities. Men are products of maximized opportunities. If you don't use your opportunities well, you will not advance in life. I'm talking about your wiring for greatness. God will open some doors to you like you will open to certain people. How prepared you are when you open that door. We tell on how successful you will be. Sometimes God will orchestrate events in our life that through them, we can move forward. We can move forward. Consider Mordecai. Mordecai was in the, te- was in the temple, was at the gate, and then he had the news that some people were planning a coup. Now, that was an opportunity. He reported to the king, and the Bible said the king forgot him. But because the time for advancement came, the king could not sleep. Why? Because God will always remember. God will always remember. David only had an opportunity to lead a sheep in the wilderness. And he led it, and it led to his increase. I, thought I first had an opportunity to lead at my office in a moment and in a time of crisis. Everybody resigned at the outreach center. Everybody resigned, and it was only me. I was the least person there. But because everyone had gone, someone had to do the job. So it was at that moment of crisis uh, that I was noticed. The crisis that the COVID-19 has brought is an opportunity for advancement. You are seeing crisis, God is seeing opportunity. You need to begin to say, Lord, open my eyes. Let me see. Because when you use it, certain unique opportunities. When you use them well, advancement will come. Number three, what is your consuming passion? I'm talking about these special wiring. So you are wired for greatness. What is your consuming passion? Some people are passionate about children on the street. Some people are passionate about marriage. Some people are passionate about purpose, like me. Some people are passionate about revival. Some people are passionate about the Holy Ghost. Some people are passionate about raising men. Some people are passionate about building companies. Some people are passionate about wealth. What is it that you are passionate about? What is it that you lose your sleep over? This may be a pointer to something deep within Something dormant on the inside. Passion is defined as strong and uncontrollable emotion. Ask yourself, what am I serious about? What am I enthusiastic about? What are you angry about? Bible told us concerning Jesus. He went to the temple. He was so angry. Scripture told us he took, he took, he took Cain and he plucked them out of the temple. And he said, you have turned my father's house, which is supposed to be the house of prayer. You have turned it to the den of thieves. Why was he passionate? Other people saw it. They didn't do anything. He didn't do it because he's the son of God. He did it because of the passion he had. How passionate are you? What irritates you most? Maybe what you are called to change. I remember one time the choir was singing in church. And then some folks were saying, Oh, who was saying this song was not good? Oh, that guy was flatter. All of that. The sound was not neat. Blah, blah, blah. And one guy looked at me and said, What are you people talking about? He cannot even hear it. He can't hear it. So whether it's good music or not, let's just dance to the song. It's wired differently. He's not passionate about that. But if it's someone who is passionate, he say, no, no, no. That's not the string that's played there. No, no, no. That's not how to play the drums there. No, no, no. Why? Because that's his passion. What are you passionate about? I love Jehu. The Bible told us in 2 Kings 10 and verse 16. The Bible says Jehu went to Jehonadab. I said, come, follow me. Come and see my passion. For God, for God, you need to tell your neighbor, come follow me. Come and see my passion for entrepreneurship. Come and see my passion for elevation. Come and see my passion for prayer. Come and see my passion for young people. There must be something that drives you. And then number four, what is the nudge of the Holy Ghost in your heart? What is the nudge of the Holy Spirit? Scripture says the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. It doesn't just bear that witness when we become born again. It bears that witness every time in our journey with God. 
every time he will be at that witness. He will tell you, you are on the right, in the right place. Sir. He will tell you, this is what you need to begin to do right now. He will tell you, this is what you need to begin to do right now. Do you sense the gentle nudge of the Spirit concerning an area of your life? Is he constantly telling you, you can do it? What is the witness of the Spirit in your spirit? Job 32 verse 8. There is a spirit in man. The Spirit of the Most High gives him understanding. Listen to this. What will you be doing right now if you have no fear of failing? What will you be doing right now if there's no fear of failing? What has the Holy Spirit told you that you have stopped doing and you have said, I cannot achieve this? Listen to this. God will never give you a vision that you can achieve on your own. People who attain greatness are not men who are not afraid. They are men who go on despite their fears. You must learn to conquer fear. As you conquer sin as a believer, you must also conquer fear. You must learn to believe and trust what God has said. Faith is trusting and believing in God's word. Fear is trusting and believing in the word of the devil. He alone knows what is on your inside. The Holy Spirit was there when you were made. He can tell you why you have the gift you have. Somebody say, why, why do I see all this mismanagement? Why do I see all these things? Why do I see the corruption? Why are you passionate about governance? Why are you passionate about life, about politics, about sports, about entertainment? The Holy Spirit can tell you why. And then number five, your relationships, your unique wiring. You know, I have told people and I, and I tell people every time that because we know the same persons does not mean we have the same relationship with them. Because you know me, it does not mean that you relate with me the way Mr. another person relates with me. Relationships is God's gift to us. There is a lot of wealth in relationships. What are the people you have in your life? Do you have counselors? There is value in relationships. There are really cheese in relationships. You need to learn to keep digging. God is here with us and for us. There is a lot of wealth in people. When God wants to elevate a man, he gives him relationship. Relationship is one of God's access key to promotion. One of God's access key to promotion is relationship. If you open a door, he gives you kingdom connection. He gives you divine connection. Destiny connection. God will lead you towards someone. The disciples needed to know more about God. He led them to Christ. Oh, Timothy needed to know more. He led him to Paul. God opened divine relationship for folks. Uh, I tell people, you don't know whether David would have been able to conquer Saul without a Jonathan. If Jonathan also had wanted to become king, it would be easy because they were already friends. May God give you divine connections. May God give you men in the name of Jesus. And then number six, you need to have gifts. You, need, you will have gifts, skills, and abilities. Your gifts are the difference makers in your life. We are gifted differently. Some people hear good, good music, like I said. Some people cannot. Some people can arrange chaos. Some people can add to chaos. What are your skills? A skill is the ability to perform an action with determined results. The ability to perform an action with determined results. Within a given time, energy, or space. And there are two types of skills. There's what we call soft skills and hard skills. Oh, hard skills, you are an engineer. Praise God. <laughs> you are a doctor. Hard skills. Soft skills can be defined as character traits or interpersonal attitude that affect your ability to work and interact with others. They are natural abilities that may not be able, you may not get in the classroom. They are often, people call them, some of them are what we call people's skills. I'll give you examples of them. Some of us are looking at these skills and we don't know they are important. Some of them are important. They are, they are things you need. They, are, they contribute to your emotional intelligence, your social intelligence. One of them is communication, communication skills. Another one is teamwork. Another one is adaptability, the ability to adapt. Another one is problem solving. Another one, creativity. Another one, work ethic, being diligent in your work. Another one, interpersonal skills. Another one, time management. That's a skill. The ability to manage time. Another thing is leadership. Leadership. Some people say leaders are not born, they are made. But you know what? There is something called the law of the lead. You cannot improve someone who is on a 3.0 scale. You can't take him to a 10. 
Uh, so there's something natural also about charisma. Another thing is attention to detail. Your soft skills are therefore your wiring for greatness. Because some of these skills are not learned. You are born with it. They are your wiring for greatness. Oh, art skills, photography, editing, cinematography, and all of these things. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 13 told us about that. Now, it is time to engage your unique equipping. It is time to change. It is time for you to live life differently. In conclusion, let me just say five things here. In conclusion, let me say five things here. Number one, it is time to change your life story by changing the story you tell yourself. What you tell yourself is what you believe. If you tell yourself you are special, you are great, you will believe that you are special, you will also believe that you are great. So, first thing, conclusion, it is time to change your life story by changing the story you tell yourself. Number two, you are made for much more and you can become more by first believing that you are more than what you are, who you are, what you are using, and what you are giving. You are made for much more. And you can become more by first believing that you are more than what you are, what you are using, what you are giving, and where you are. Number three, if you will make better impact and impression, then you must evolve. If you make better impact, if you will make lasting impression, you must evolve. You must change. The result of your life right now is the, res- is the result of your life. The result you are getting is the resultant effect of your life. If you will improve your result, then you must improve your life. Therefore, change. Give more. Become more. And you will see more result. Number four, your life now is the result of the you now. I think I just said that. To have better results, you must get better. And then finally, number five, change. It's not just a result of desire. It's a result of change in what in living. Change your life. You will change your result. Someone says, I desire to be great. Desire cannot take you there. I'm sorry to bust your bubble. Desire cannot make you great. You must change. You must actively begin to walk. And that's the journey we want to take as you and I take this journey together in the Evolve series. I'm sure... That if you will begin to maximize the giftings, the potentials, the opportunities that God has brought your way, you will begin to see better results and your life will change for the better. Close your eyes wherever you are joining us from. I just want you to take a moment and begin to, take, and begin to question you. Begin to ask what are the skills, the abilities you have. None, like I said, is born empty. Every one of us is born with a gift, with a talent, with a potential. We have the generic giftings, our composition, our opportunity, our, purpose, our composition, our purpose, and our authority. And then I spoke about our special wires. What are the giftings, the skills you have? What is your purpose in life? God will not call you to it without gracing you to it. I, I want you to begin to say, Lord, reveal to me. As we begin to live in this season, in this changing time, I want better results. And I understand I have to change my life story. To change my life story, Lord help me. Lord help me. Open my eyes to see. Give me confidence to believe in those things you are calling me to and for. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you're listening to me, you've not given your life to Jesus. I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. I believe that God had you in mind when he died, when his son died on the cross many years ago. We don't know when the end will come for every man or for the world. But I want you to know that you can be sure from today where you will spend eternity. Our life on the heart is very brief. But eternity is eternity. If you have never met Christ, you've never made a decision to follow Jesus. Or you made it one time and you've lost out with him. I'd like you to also take this time off and just think about your life. I'd like you to make a decision for God even tonight. <laughs> Close your eyes wherever you are. Bow down your head. If you are making that decision for God, I want you to put your hand on your chest. I would like to pray with you. 